Hey everyone, this is Structural Steve again. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to import your alignment profile into OpenBridge Modeler from sources such as OpenBridge Designer, Geopack, or Inroads. I'll also give you some tips on how to automatically annotate this alignment file. So how you go about importing your geometry, you know, all depends on the source of the data. If the roadway group you are working with is already using Open Roads Designer, then the 3D alignment file is already created for you in a DGN format, and all you need to do is reference that file in. If your roadway group is working in Geopack or Inroads or some other program, you're going to need to import that geometry into a DGN reference file that you create yourself. If you don't have any electronic files to import or reference the roadway data from, then you'll need to use the civil tools that are built in OBM to create that yourself. So we're going to focus today on the second of those three scenarios in this video, which is importing data from Geopack. And just as a reminder, as I've said in other videos, I like to keep my alignment in a fi separate file from my main OBM model. And this serves three main purposes. The first is to reduce any potential production choke points in file access. Second is to make it easier to keep track of when you imported the alignment from Geopack in case there's any changes that the roadway group made that you didn't know about. And the third reason is to make it easier to move your bridge to an updated alignment if changes to the roadway geometry do occur after you've already modeled your bridge. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is talk over with whoever is doing the roadway design in Geopack and get the exact name of the alignment and profile. And this is critical because Geopack files oftentimes have a ton of different alignments and profiles in them, oftentimes all with similar names as the roadway designer was going through their iteration process. So make sure you write down the exact name of the alignment profile you import from Geopack in case it changes in the future. I even like to name my alignment file to match the names of the alignment and profile I imported from Geopack, so there's no question of what I pulled from Geopack. And once you have that information, you're going to want to go ahead and create a new file. And to make it easier for myself and others to identify the file, I like to include certain information in the file name, such as the bridge name or number, the name of the alignment profile I pulled from Geopack, and an abbreviation for the word alignment, and also the date that I pulled that information. I'm going to go ahead and create that new file now. Again, with all these elements that I just talked about, the bridge name or number, the name of the alignment or profile I'm pulling from Geopack, an abbreviation for the word alignment, and then the date that it was pulled and then click OK. Now this interface here looks a little bit different than I was opening or creating that new file from because this is from ProjectWise, but it'll look pretty similar for non-ProjectWise files as well. And now I'm in my new newly created file here. So I'm gonna go up to the OpenBridge Modeler workflow, go to Import, Geometry, Going to navigate to that GPK file for the job that the information is stored in. Go ahead and open that file. And this will bring up a tree style selection menu. The first thing you're going to want to do is select the proper alignment followed by the proper profile. And I like to make this window a little bit bigger here as there's usually a lot of information in that Geopack file. So I'm just going to go ahead and find my alignment first. And then the subsequent profile. Check that and notice when you click the profile down here, it'll automatically select your alignment for you. So you only have to click the profile really. And hit import. Now you're not going to see anything here because most likely the space you're at in the microstation space isn't going to be the wherever the alignment was brought into. So if you just hit fit view, you'll find your profile in your alignment. Now that you have the roadway geometry imported in your file, you're going to notice that it doesn't have any color and didn't get assigned any level symbology. So the next step is to assign a feature definition to this roadway geometry. This will allow us to auto annotate the alignment as it knows that it is indeed an alignment. And to assign this feature definition, all you need to do is select your roadway geometry. Go to properties. Hover down to feature definition here. Click the drop down. It might take a second, so give it uh, give it a few seconds. Then I'm going to go to alignment and geom baseline. And now you notice that the color changed, and it now knows that it is indeed a roadway alignment here. 
And another thing you might notice too is the fact that there's two different lines in here. And I'm going to go to a front view here to kind of show you what the difference is between the two. So the bottom one is a, a 2D representation of your alignment, whereas the top one here is the alignment and profile kind of merge together into the true 3D bridge roadway alignment and profile line. So this is a 3D you know, complex chain that's following along the deck surface here. So now that we took care of that, we're gonna go ahead and auto annotate our alignment profile here. And to do that, we're gonna go up to analysis and reporting and annotate model. And just data click. And then you're gonna see your annotations in there. You'll notice first off that these are pretty small. You can't really quite see them. And that's just because of the scale that's set here. The information is there, but it just looks you can't really see it when you're zoomed off far away. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to a different annotation scale up here in this file. I'm gonna switch back to just an isometric view so we can see a little bit better here too. Again, tough to see, so let's go ahead and change that annotation scale. Now I personally like to do something like a one to, one to 50, just because that's easier to see um, for most jobs here. So now we have that, we zoom in, and this is more along the scale that we're gonna be working in, and we can see those annotations pretty easily. But this is a great feature, you know, this, all this information was stored in this alignment and profile that we brought into from Geopack, and the fact that we assigned it a feature definition allowed us to automatically annotate it, or let you know, OBM or MicroStation really in the background annotate it. So you have all the curve information here, all the station information, you know, everything you could possibly need in here, and you know, this can really save a lot of time and effort here. And another reason why I like to set the, the scale here in this separate file is because if you were to change the scale in your main OBM file, that will change how things are looking or appearing in the OBM file that you may not want to change, such as when you're modifying a library template or something like that and you're showing the dimensions of that template, you know, if you have this annotation scale changed in that file, that's gonna mess up what those look like in that file. So it's best to control the annotation scale of your, your alignment here within the alignment file you just created. And that's it. You know, we successfully imported our roadway geometry from Geopec and are ready to start modeling our bridge. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button you see in your screen now. Give the video a like and share it with others. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on my comment section and I'll do my best to respond to them. See you guys in the next video.